In this video, I'm going to tell you the equipment I would buy if I was going to start a lawn care business today. But I'm going to do it in a little bit unique style that you might not be ready for. I've been on YouTube for nearly forever, and I pulled a video that I did 10 years ago, one of the first videos I ever did. So this might be reminiscent for those of you who've been following me for a long time, where I gave lawn care business advice from 10 years ago. Well, I'm going to watch that video and I'm going to see what I agree with then, but also give you today's advice. What equipment do you need today if you're going to start a lawn care business? So this video has got it all wrapped up into one. Let's get started right now. Okay, that was my old school intro I used to do. That was my website, start-lawncarebusiness.com back in the day. And I used to have that every time. I don't do that anymore, but that's kind of uh, reminiscent for me. Hey everybody, Jason Creel. Uh, continuing on with our 10 most asked questions in the lawn business. Today, we're gonna talk about what kind of equipment do you need in the lawn business? And when I started lawn business, that was one of the biggest questions I had. And one of the things I tried to do the most research on is you know what kind of mower do I buy? What kind of weed eater? What you know things like that because it's a lot of money and you don't want to buy the wrong kind. So uh, let me start with th with that point and what I just said. You don't want to buy the wrong kind. I think a lot of times you get on lawn business forums and you see some really opinionated people saying that. You know, if you, if, if you don't use steel, you're wrong, or if, you, if it's not a, a X mark or whatever brand, uh, as if there's only one brand that'll do the job. And, and from me, you'll hear my preferred brand, but I don't, I'm not adamant just on one brand is the only kind that you can use. Um, you know, there's a lot of good brands out there. I just happen to be partial to, to certain types. So, all right, let's stop it there for just a second. What do you think about that as far as, uh, I guess that's still true today. One, I do look a little younger then, but people sometimes get all hung up. Like if you don't use this one particular type of, of string trimmer or backpack blower or mower or whatever, then that's like the only one that you can use that makes a decent product. Thankfully, we're in a competitive environment where the lawn care manufacturers, the equipment manufacturers are competing against each other and they're trying to make better equipment to win your business. That's good for us, the lawn care providers, because we want them continuing to make better and better and better machinery and have multiple options that are great. It's not like your local power company or whatever that might be a monopoly and you have no choice, whether they're good, bad, whatever, that's who you're stuck with. Thankfully, lawn equipment is not that. So I'm about to get to some of my actual recommendations here on the old video, and then I'm gonna tell you my current recommendations. Uh, for a zero turn mower, if I'm just starting in the lawn business, focus on residentials. People ask, you know, if you just buy one mower, what do you buy? When I start, I start with a 44 inch Hustler mower. And I love that mower and I, it was a good mower. I think it's a good size if you're just doing residential, a little small for, for uh, larger properties, but you know, a 44, 42, 48 inch deck is good for residential. I still to this day am partial to the Hustler mower. I think it's, um, you know, it's my number one choice. Uh, I would not be ashamed at all to use an X Mark or a Skag, uh, you know, other good brands, you know, Ferris is, it makes a good mower. You know, and, and there's other kinds that are fine, but those, you know, like so my top three would be a Hustler, an X Mark and a Skag, you know, and really partial to Hustler just because that's what I've had the most experience with. Let's talk about this mower setup. My first mower I had, and this is probably why I was partial to it 10 years ago, uh, I had a 2003 Hustler Mini Z with a 19 horsepower Kawasaki engine, 44 inch deck. That was a great mower. And I had a shoot block on that thing and I would be out there mowing. I remember, I've told this story before, but my very first year in lawn business, early on in that year, I sent a quote to an HOA or it was like a property management company that kind of took care of this little neighborhood and the entrance way. And I got, it was $1,025 per month year round. So you're talking about a little over $12,000 a year. Uh, and it was not that big and it was very profitable. And I thought, man, this is great. And I had so many horrible jobs before that. And that kind of got me started. And then after that, 
I got in touch with the builder who was building in that neighborhood. And there was a lot of houses that had not sold yet. They're building all these little bitty houses, no fences, no nothing. And he wanted me to just keep them cut. I mean, just, he didn't care about, he didn't want them edged. I think I, I did like weed eat around the little house and stuff, but little tiny yards. I mean, literally like 10 of them on one street, maybe. And I remember I would take that 44 inch hustler and I'd cut the entrance way. And now I go get on those houses and I would just run through all the backyards at the same time because all these vacant houses stacked up together. And I think I was charging 20 bucks. <laughs> no edge, no anything, just cut them off. But it was, it was like, say I had like 20 of them right there together. You may have 400 bucks and it didn't take hardly any time. And then doing the entrance way was very profitable. So that got me started and it was uh, a great start, just to be honest with you. And by far the best job I'd ever had at that point. So what would I say today? What would be different? Well, I think there's some questions you got to think through because, you know, let's say uh, you are you got $100,000 you want to invest in a lawn care business and you know that you're trying to grow to seven figures in two to three years. You know, you want multiple crews. You're going to have an unbelievable marketing campaign. You're trying to grow fast and aggressively towards commercial properties and big stuff. And you're trying to build something huge. Well, you know, my advice to you might be a little bit different than what I find that is is the majority of people that look to start a lawn care business. And I would think we be more likely to watch this video is somebody that's wanting to start relatively small. Maybe they've been cutting a few yards on the side. They're considering going full time or they're just thinking about getting into this next year, whatever the situation may be, but they don't have a hundred thousand dollars to invest. They're like me. When I started, I didn't have very much money. I bought a a 1999, I believe, F-150, just basic work truck, roll down windows, vinyl seats, all that. And it was great. I think it was like 44000 bucks or 4100 or something, had 97,000 miles on it. And it was a great truck, V6 engine. I mean, just a basic truck. You can, It just looked like a white work truck, single cab with nothing. And I got a trailer. I got that Hustler mower. I was up and running. And, and to be honest with you, I mean, yeah, I had trimmer and blower and all that. We'll get to that. But that was what I needed to get started. And it was great. And so I think for a lot of people, to me, instead of like, let's just go break the bank on all the, the unbelievable equipment, um, let's get you in the game and start making money. And upgrading equipment is not hard. I mean, it, it's getting started, getting the initial cash flow, not going bankrupt your first year, you know, things like that that are very important. So what I would encourage you to do today, if I was starting a biz and I was going to get a mower and I was starting small, like I think a lot of people do, with the idea that, that, that they might grow to hire one person to work with them or maybe two and, and just have a small crew. And if you want to go bigger than that, then great. But you could still start this way. But I would probably get like, like a 48 to 52 inch mower because that's such a versatile size. You know, even a 52 will get through some gates. A 48, if you just know you're going to be doing a lot of residentials, is probably... Um, great. The 52, obviously, if you got some bigger properties, if you got a lot of big properties, 60. But to me, the 48 and 52 are the most versatile sizes, common sizes you're going to see out there. And I, I started trending more toward the 52 over time. But um, there's a lot of brands. What I used to do when I was start, I would look for like a brand I knew and respected, and I would try to find a used one. Now, back then on Craigslist today, I guess would be more Facebook Marketplace. You're trying to find a, a low hours mower that, even if it's older, for me, I'd rather get one that was older, had low hours than a new one with high hours. You know, So let's say you have $5,000 to spend on a mower and, and you found a, a one that looked like a homeowner had, let's say it's a 48 inch, uh, I'm just going to throw one out there, like an Xmark radius. Okay, so that's not the, the laser Z. It's not the top of the line Xmark, but it's still a very respectable mower. People use them all the time cutting commercially. And you found one that was maybe four or five years old that only had 300 hours on it. Well, you could probably get that for, for less than $5,000 and could be a good mower to get you going. So, I would look for something like that. Again, there's other brands. I just use that, but I, I like the Toro. I, I've got a Toro. I like the Skag. I like the Hustler mowers. Uh, I've had several Gravelys that were good. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of brands that can serve you well, but I'm, I'm looking for one that I can get a good value out of instead of uh, one that's got all the bells and whistles that's going to be more expensive or it's got a lot more hours on it.
And personally, if I was doing a lot of small yards, I might um, lean a little bit more toward the stander um, if it was me a stand on mower. So, yeah, you can go with the sit down mower and that's fine. Of course, you got a lot of heels you might want to go walk behind. But um, for me, if I could get a stander, I'm going to tell you why here in a minute. Uh, I think that's probably the direction I would lean. But again, if I found a good deal on one that you sit on, a, a traditional zero turn mower, then I'm going to jump all over that as well if I can get low hours and for a good price. Now, there's somebody that just wants something brand new and want the warranty and all that. Hey, go for it. That's fine. But I'm just kind of telling you the approach that I've taken in the past. All right, let's continue with the video and then I'll give you some more thoughts on today's advice. Weed eater, or weed whacker, whatever you call it. Uh, to me, this is the hardest category to find a decent product. You know, uh, back in the day, a good steel uh, was was what people use and last. A steel, a steel um, no pun intended, would use a steel. I uh, do do have that, and uh, and a Husqvarna would be my other choice. I, I I'd give a slight edge to my Husqvarna. It's a little bit lighter. Uh, seems to have less maintenance required. The steel seems to have to get the valves adjusted, but either way, steel or Husqvarna, I think you'll be fine. You know, Edger, I use an old Echo Edger, but, you know, same brand of, of Edger would work as your weed eater. Um, hedge trimmers, if you're just going to have one set, and I do recommend go ahead and get some hedge trimmers if you can, because it's, it's just one piece of equipment that can make you a lot of money. I, I just have the, a, a really long set. I mean, sometimes you'll buy a short set, long set. I go ahead and just get the long set. I feel like they're more comfortable to use or uh, easier on your back. And so, so I, I've got a, I've had Shindawa, I've had Steel, I've had Echo, you know. Um, I know this may sound weird, but if you can find a, a little bit older set, you know, the gray Echo as opposed to the orange Echo, that's uh, in good condition. You know, a lot of times you buy them on, if you're tight for, uh, on your budget, you can get them off eBay for a lot less than you would, you know, in the store, so. All right. I don't know if that guy knows what he's talking about or not. I'm just kidding. Um, well, a lot of that was based off my early experience in lawn business, the things I had done. I, I, I personally wouldn't buy lawn equipment typically off eBay anymore unless it was new, like handheld equipment. To me, blowers, hedge trimmers, trimmers, string trimmers, edgers, all that, it's, it's, it's not worth enough money to buy used, in my opinion. So like if, if a trimmer's $350 and I, I get one for 200 that's used and, and I have problems with it, it's like, why? I understand a used lawnmower if I'm saving thousands of dollars, but if I'm saving 150 bucks, just buy a new one. Cause I, one day of the thing being down is, is to me worth $150 that I saved on buying a used one. So I, I, I don't want to mess with that. So uh, I do today. I still, I like Husqvarna. Uh, my favorite trimmer I'll ever have, and I might buy one of these used if I could find one just cause they don't make them new anymore. I don't think the the Husqvarna 326 LS. It was nine pounds, and I thought it had decent power. Today, I've got a 322 um, LS or L or something. I've got I had the 525 LS Husqvarna 525 LS, and that would probably be what I'd go buy if I was starting a mowing company today. The steel, I, like back in the, when I had started a lot of this, people would talk about the steel FS80. I believe it was, and that was like great. Them things last forever. And some of you maybe can comment if you if you used to own one of those and, and if they're good or not. And I'm not I steel and echo and all that. All these companies are making good equipment. I personally like the Husqvarna. Some of it doing do the fact that they feel like they are lighter weight, and I feel like they still have decent power. So I would go with Husqvarna. Um, the backpack blowers. I don't. Know if, maybe I'm going to get to that here in a minute. But the edgers. I mean. I guess I would get a Husqvarna edge or two. I don't know. But when it came to hedge trimmers, I'll be honest, this is where I, I have changed a little bit, and this obviously wasn't as relevant 10 years ago. But I like the battery-powered uh, hedge trimmers because things like hedge trimmers that you don't use all the time, and see anybody you want to go to use them, and they're not working right. But I did like what I said 10 years ago about the longer set of trimmers. I particularly like those, at least like the mid-set. But I, I get the long ones that have the articulating head. So like now I've got a, a set of Milwaukee tools, uh, hedge trimmers that are long articulate and it, they're great. I mean, as a matter of fact, a friend of mine that's mowing lawns, he's always wanting to borrow them. I think he's got them right now, actually. So, uh, 
I think the and the battery powered shorter hedge trimmers are fine. They to, they they last long enough typically to complete a reasonably sized hedge trimming job, or you can carry extra batteries with you. And they're they're powerful, and then you don't have to worry about is my hedge trimmer is going to start this time. So I would uh, and the Milwaukee is the one I've used um, the most, so that's the one I would go with. But I so that's the only one I've experienced with. I can't really comment on the other ones. Uh, but it has been fantastic and also have a, a pole saw attachment, which I use also. All right, let's see what else I'm going to say. Uh, right now, I've got a steel set, and they're, they're, they're really long uh, kind, and, they, and they're working great. So, uh, as far as backpack blower, I personally use Red Max, uh, and that, again, that's my top choice. I, I A steel would be fine, uh, though, again, Steels today seem to have to constantly have to get their valves adjusted. They start losing power quickly. Yeah, so I had some, I must have knew somebody back then that was, had steel and they would tell me about that because I've never, I don't think I've ever actually owned a steel backpack blower. I bought a Red Max when I first started and I honestly have had no reason to use any other brand. Like the Red Max blowers to me are great. Uh, now I've got a Milwaukee little handheld blower. I use blow fertilizer on sidewalk. But and when I first started, I had like the seven thousand series Red Max, which you know is not the biggest one. I don't know that I've ever actually had the biggest one, which is like the eighty five fifty or I don't know what they call it now. But I had that the seven thousand. I had the one below that, which was like a sixty five hundred. And I, I, the one I typically like, and this is probably if I was just out there, small business, going to go blow off some residential lawns, I would probably get the fifty one fifty which is the one I have today at my house. And it's like a mid-size. Now, if you know you're going to be doing big leaf cleanups or going out there to blow off Walmart's parking lot or something, then obviously bigger. But just for, for small, to me, those kind of mid-size blowers make sense. And I think Red Max is about as good as you're going to get as far as blowers go. All this stuff, you can comment below. I think I'm right, wrong, and different, whatever equipment you like to use. I've uh, literally had my red maxes fall off the truck you know multiple times they keep running and over years uh keep their power up so i i've been thrilled to death with the red max blowers uh husqvarna too husqvarna actually owns red max so uh you, you'll do fine with the husqvarna as well um i think if i'm leaving anything out i think that's pretty much it you know for the main uh, lawn care equipment i mean obviously you need a truck a trailer but uh, anyway, that's it for today. Thanks a lot. All right. So that was uh, that was how I used to do videos back in the day, sitting there talking and uh, abrupt ending to the video. That's it for today in my intro. I kind of like that intro still today, a little bit lengthy. But here's one of the big things I would change. So if I was starting off and you want to get a truck and a trailer, you know, like a six by 12 trailer, sometimes you can fit two mowers on there, especially if they're stand on mowers or one stand or one rider. But I tell you what, if I was starting a day, I'm just telling you the honest truth. I believe I would go get the ramp rack. And I saw it at the Quip Expo recently. And uh, the guy's name's Wyatt. He's up in, in Maryland. And it's a insert that fits in the back of a pickup truck. There's the larger version, the smaller version. The large one, I think something like 3,500, which I know is more expensive than a lot of trailers. And the smaller one is in the 2,000 range, maybe low 2,000 range, I forget. Um, they do uh, offer discounts sometimes at the trade show. But the uh, small one, I'm not sure if it would hold a 48-inch mower or not. You'd have to look at it, but you can go to Ramp Rack, look it up, Google it after the video. But to me, yeah, it's a little more expensive than trailer. But now you've got an all, uh, but now you're not pulling a trailer. I mean, you, it's literally, you just fold the ramp down. It, you can pick it up with your foot. It's so easy because they got a big spring on it, help you lift the gate up. And to me, just the value of not pulling a trailer. Now, if I was going to pull a trailer and you're just going to stay super small, one mower, you could get a five by eight, five by 10, something like that with a little, 48 inch mower on it or you, if you know you want to get bigger you might go ahead and get a six by 12 or something like that but i think the ramp rack is awesome and the thing is with that bigger ramp rack and i saw this with my own eyes you put two stand on mowers in the back of the truck with no trailer i mean just had to have the it kind of extends on past the bed and the other cool thing about it is he had it with all the 
decked out with all these green touch racks. So if you want to get your backpack blower rack, string trimmer racks, you mount it right on the side of the ramp rack. And now you got your mowers in there. You got your blower, you got a trimmer. They've got it with the ramp rack where you can get these uh, shelves that go up on the front for like gas cans and things. He even had a push mower put up there on the top. I don't know about picking that thing up all the time, but it was a really cool compact setup. And I think there's a lot of value in that. So would I pay uh, an extra thousand dollars, let's say, over the for the small one over what a trailer would cost you? Or maybe it's two thousand dollars for the bigger one over what a trailer would cost you. To me, it's worth it if it's like a designated mowing truck because you see the people would have got the cab over like the Zuzu with the big trailer on it. I think those things are awesome. Or even a box truck, whatever, but it's just no trailer. It's all there together. And the rent rack is one way to make that happen. So anyway, I, I don't know. Maybe you guys seen him can comment below. That's probably what I would do, but again, nothing wrong with a trailer. I might pull trailers all around. They're, they're fine. They're actually great. You can use them for a lot of things, but I just think I would rather have the more compact unit if I was doing it again. One other thought as I wrap up the video is I think what I've said this before, but these big companies that have tons of money, they'll have a box truck or one of them with Zuzu cab overs and they'll have one mower back there, It'd be like a, a walk behind 42 inch, 48 inch walk behind, something like that. And two guys in there. And, and, that, and I'm telling you, they can afford whatever equipment they want. And that's what they got to go out there and start mowing lawns. So the opposite extreme is that one guy who's got every piece of equipment ever, you know, he, he pulls up and got three zero turns and gets out of the truck by himself and, and four trimmers and two blowers and looks like he's just going to a trade show. I mean, looks like to sell equipment or something. And... Something tells me the, the the big company that's making gazillion dollars a year has got something figured out about overhead and profitability in lawn care. And so they go buy one mower, two guys, a truck, and they're out there just knocking out all the lawns all the time. The other guy, you know, sometimes it's, uh, you, you make $50, you go spend 60 on a new piece of equipment. And so I, I don't know, that, that goes more into business sense, but I, I don't think you necessarily have to have tons of equipment to get out there and start being profitable and then even then when you're profitable you, you think do, what does the piece of equipment i want to buy because i just really want this does it make sense is it gonna seriously impact my revenue or i always use example don't go buy a, a fourteen thousand dollar bagging mower because you got four yards that want it bagged uh, you know i did that one leaf cleanup job it sure was nice having that bag and mower well, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, you know, I mean, what's your ROI on that bag and more? About seven years, you know, and you'll finally have it paid off when it, and it'll be broke. You'll need a new one by then. I mean, so just if it, that's what I loved about the Hustler Mini Z. It was like one mower. It was great. I could get out there and start riding that thing and making it happen. And that was it. Now, later, I got a walker bag and mower and I was doing more stuff and all that. But I mean, sometimes just keeping it simple and being profitable, even if you have to turn some customers down you're not getting so much overhead and upkeep on equipment. Y'all guys, let me know what you think in the comments. I want to mention a couple of things that I'm doing. One is a live event. I've had a live event. I've had three, but I, I took a couple of years off, but we're doing one November 29th near um, Birmingham, Alabama. And it's designed really for a smaller crowd. I'm thinking maybe 20 to 30 people show up. It might be five. I don't know. Well, I've had I've had some people sign up. So, but it's a, a we control workshop day. So I'm talking about hands-on, not just sitting there listening to me talk, but getting out of there, spraying, um, showing how to mix chemicals, showing how to calibrate equipment. So if you're thinking about getting into weed control and fertilization soon. And you want to like see it happen. Like, what do I actually need to know? Okay, I want to do this. I'm ready to go. I need to see it. Then this would be for you. So the way you register, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, it's $2.97 for a ticket. Or if you buy the Weed Control and Fertilization Academy, which I sell on LungCareLife.com, then you can come to the live event for free. So the, the, the Academy is $3.97. The ticket, if you want to come just as $2.97. So that's uh, out there and available. Link is in the description. The other thing I just came out with, I'm pretty excited about this. I just came out with a pricing chart. I call it the dynamic pricing chart because it's actually two pricing charts. And it's more designed for weed control fertilization, but you could use it for mowing as well. But it's actually an Excel worksheet type or Google Sheets 
uh, and it's got formulas in there. And I've got a pricing structure set up from 2,000 square foot yard and below all the way to 30,000 square feet. And it shows you very close to what I'm charging. But the good thing is about one of the sheets, I call it dynamic because it's got a minimum charge. So let's say your minimum is 40 bucks. You know, I'm not stopping truck for less than 40. It's got a, a sale where you can enter that in. And then you say, for each additional thousand square feet, I'm going to charge seven more dollars on top of the forty dollar minimum. So if it's two thousand square feet or below, it's forty bucks. If it's three thousand square feet, it's going to be the forty buck minimum plus seven more dollars. If it's five thousand, it's going to be forty dollar minimum plus fourteen more dollars. So it's got it where you can change your minimum and you can change the additional amount per thousand square feet, and it's going to repopulate the whole pricing chart for you. And then you print it off, you keep it in your truck, and laminate it. And when you go measure a yard or you go give a quote. Boom, your pricing chart's right there. And if you want to change, like say this year it's $7 per 1,000 square feet, and next year you want to go to $750, you just change it $750 and that one sale, it'll repopulate the whole pricing chart for you. I think it's pretty cool. It's 39 bucks. It's also included in some other things I'm selling on the website, um, like the weed control and fertilization documents, the academy, the letters, and uh, letters plus the documents. Anyway, a lot of things on the, on the um, website, loncarelife.com. Let me know what you think in this video. I might do some more of these reaction videos, and I really appreciate y'all watching.